everybody a very warm welcome to Fridays with Pinky. We're on to our final Q of the series. So we've had your IQ, EQ, your LQ, your likability quotient, your communication quotient, your attitude quotient, and the NQ, your meaning quotient, which we spoke about last week. And today we've come to, I think, the most important one, the kindness quotient. And I think more than ever before, it's Mental Health Awareness Week this week. We're living in very difficult times with the pandemic and kindness has become more important than ever before. I think it's taken centre stage and so we must continue to practice kindness absolutely without end. So what is the kindness quotient and how can we be kind? I think the kindness quotient is the most powerful quotient because anybody can be kind. You don't need a PhD, you don't need any money in your bank account, but you can be kind and everyone knows when you're kind. It's also something that nobody ever forgets. Nobody ever forgets when people have been kind to them. So also we don't forget it when people have been unkind to us. Kindness also is really good for your health and particularly this week we should remember this because apparently your body releases oxytocin when you're kind and it leads to a lowering of blood pressure and a general sense of happiness. Kindness also is a gift that keeps giving. I find when you're kind people want to reciprocate almost immediately and so this continued act of kindness carry on and on. Kindness has been at the heart of everything we've done. The Women of the Future program was built on kindness, the kindness of so many, and it's helped us to grow and to grow. And what we really like about kindness is that people respond to it very, very quickly. So two years ago in 2018, we actually launched Kindness and Leadership 50 Leading Lights in partnership with the Science Business School of Oxford and the Financial Times, we published the list on World Kindness Day, which is November 13. And I remember one thing, almost everyone who was on the list told me that it was the best accolade they could ever have got. Because as Professor Lalit Jury, who's one of the wisest men I've ever met, he said, when leaders are kind, they go from being successful to being significant. And I think that is what we must remember. How can we be kind leaders? Through our programs, we have been so lucky to meet some of the kindest people ever. And there's a very famous saying in Islam that it's good to give when asked, but better to give when asked to understanding. So you perceive a need in someone and give it without them even asking. And there are three people that spring to mind. There's so many people who've been kind to us that I can't even begin to name them, but there are three that I would like to mention. And the first one is Shenaz Engineer, who's been a friend of mine for a very long time. Shenaz will never say no, whether you're asking for a fundraising event or you're asking for her time, her advice, her mentoring skills. She gives without ever thinking. And then there's Ian Alberg and Lee Thompson. Ian is from the Financial Times and Lee is from CNBC. Both of them have done so much for us and gone that extra mile, and for that we will always be very grateful. But I'd like to leave you with a more relevant story. Um, on March 20th, I came back after a trip to Cambodia just before lockdown, and my good friend Vanessa Ogden, who's the head teacher of a school in Tower Hamlet, rang me up and asked if I could help them because they had a lot of children from disadvantaged families and they wanted to give them packs to take away every week because they probably wouldn't be able to afford much. And they raised some money, but she said they couldn't find a source to supply what they needed. And if you all remember, at that time all the supermarket shelves were really empty, and she asked if I could help. So I actually went to a friend of mine whose husband's on the board of Tesco's and asked if they could help them. And he went to the CEO of Tesco's who said they wouldn't be able to help them in that area, they didn't have that resource, but they would ask Charles Wilson, who's the CEO of Booker. Um, and they went to Charles Wilson, and within no time, Charles had come back and said, yes, they can go to this shop, they will help you, and they can buy whatever they want, but the first £2,000 will be my present. 
this was a man who we'd never met, who never knew anything about us, who went way out of his way to make a difference. And thanks to him, really, 300 families every week in that area are getting packed that are helping them live today. So I think we have to remember that all of us can be kind at every opportunity. And we are going to be opening nominations for our kindness list again very soon. So please do think of the people you can nominate. And I'd like to end by saying, if kindness was a currency, then we would all be millionaires. So let's continue to spend like there is no tomorrow. Hey everybody, how are you today? Now, we have got a really nice, uh, simple little recipe for you. In fact, I would not like to call it a recipe today. It's more of a masterclass. And it's a masterclass in getting your salad caprese absolutely perfect the ultimate caprese the ultimate summer salad the ultimate italian salad and i'm going to show you what ingredients we need for that today the caprese salad a real caprese salad only has three ingredients and three ingredients only I can't emphasize this enough. So we have some beautiful basil leaves. We have a buffalo mozzarella and buffalo mozzarella only. Do not buy a cow's mozzarella. They are rubber balls. They are spongy, bouncy, rubbery, everything you do not want in your caprese salad. And we have tomatoes, cherry vine tomatoes, as you can see. When you go to your supermarket or your market and you're looking for the perfect tomato for the caprese salad, spend money the right tomato is actually when you reach the moment when you're looking at the price of the tomato you're like oh my god are they asking that much money that's when you know you've got the right tomato for your caprese right let's cut these tomatoes so here we go i've got a really nice sharp knife beautiful chef's knife i have um, now my suggestion is if you do not have a beautiful chef's knife like mine or a sharp one even more important you could even have a not so great knife as long as it's really sharp you can cut your tomatoes perfectly and beautifully so if you don't have it get yourself a serrated knife okay so even like a, a bread knife that will do just fine it'll get you a much better result than a bluntish kitchen chef's knife so we have our tomatoes in here we'll add a little bit of olive oil and I like to use Tuscan olive oils or Ligurian olive oils they're nice and grassy they have a bit of pepper going on in there as well so it's a really good balance and I'm just going to toss them around so they're coated in the oil don't want to overdo it on the oil not yet anyway we'll be adding that at the end as well right we have our tomatoes and we have our plates ready for presentation put some tomatoes on there and move her back to the side. Maman Supreme, like I said, the buffalo mozzarella, the bowl of hot water, toss it around there and just leave it there for a little while. Toss it around a bit more and we'll turn it over. You know how nice and comfortable we feel when we have a shower, when you get into that bath of it's like, ah. Oh. Now I imagine this buffalo mozzarella is gonna be feeling exactly the same. So after about 20 seconds, it's ready to take out. Let's give it a bit of a shake. You don't want water on your plate, do you? Right. Now, this is a small buffalo mozzarella uh, at 150 grams, and I'm going to just cut these, this one, in four. Because I like big pieces. I think they look good. Again. <clears throat> Time to plate the mozzarella. Put a chunk in there. A little chunk here, and a chunk there, and a chunk there. Now, when you're presenting a plate, it's always really a good thing to have them pointed in different directions. Like these, this mozzarella, for example, you know, if you put them all in a line, in a straight line, it just looks really boring. It just looks really so 70s. We can't have that. We like to be a bit rustic about this thing. It's a very rustic dish. It's a very traditional rustic Italian dish and you just want to just get it on the plate even if you prefer. You can just tear the mozzarella. Whatever you like. Whatever you fancy. Right, so we've got this. We're going to put a bit more olive oil on there. And not be too shy. Here we go. Followed by a bit of cracked pepper. 
Now I have a beautiful bit of flaky sea salt here. And I'm going to tell you a little tip, and I'm not one to promote uh, our brands, but Malden sea salt is my favorite salt. It works so well, so nice and crunchy. You get a crunch and it melts in your mouth and it's gone. It gives you that beautiful salty, sea salty flavor. It's exactly what you want. Final ingredient, the basil leaves. So the smaller leaves, you can just put on there like so because they look really pretty. And if you have any bigger leaves, tear them up, release that flavor, release the aroma. And again, don't be too finickety about that. Just throw it in there, you know. And that's really all we need to make the ultimate caprese. Now, time for a bite. So, a piece of mozzarella and these beautiful tomatoes. And I'm having a bit of trouble here. But not that much trouble. Really, there is no better salad than this. There really isn't. The temperature's above 25 degrees. We'll get yourself a really nice glass of Pinot Grigio. It doesn't have to be a hugely expensive wine. You don't want that with a rustic dish like this anyway. You just, all you need want to do when you're cooking is find balance. Get the best ingredients and find balance. I'm going to have to have another bite. It's just so wonderful. I was supposed to be sharing this with my brother. It was his birthday yesterday, but I think he's had enough gifts for one day. Buon appetito!